Welcome everyone. Thanks for joining in. We'll get started here in about five minutes. And we have Drew that's just jumped in as well. Good morning, everybody. Good afternoon to some. Yes. Yeah, last time we had people from all over North America uh, two weeks ago. So hopefully we can do the same thing. Um, speaking of which, Drew, do you want to share that one slide that uh, asked people to introduce themselves on the chat? Absolutely. Yeah, so we really like to see where everyone's coming from as they're joining in. That really kind of helps create a sense of community. I don't know about everyone here, but we're really excited to have a little community with everyone for the next hour. So if you just want to post up um, where you're from, what organization, and, and if you're thinking about some kind of a virtual or hybrid event this year, what that might be. Um, it's always neat to see what people are thinking about and help idea generate. So it's, uh, if you just want to post in the chat where you're from, the location, organization, everything else, and Drew's going to post that up and share its screen. I'm going to right now. Perfect. I do see a question in the chat there. Um, from Laura. Oh, I see Justin's answering it, but we do have it in webinar format today. Uh, anytime we do these, it's always good to, uh, in all of the events we do, um, just kind of be able to distinguish and, and it helps keep it a bit simple, but we will be actively answering questions in uh, the chat as well as Q&A if you use them throughout, so. Oh, thanks, Donna. We got our first one who's posted in. Donna from Soyuz, there we go, just south of where, uh, where the head office of Charles is actually in Kelowna, BC. So welcome, Donna. So we have a few questions. I'll let Justin handle the uh, the pre-show. I'm, I'm used to being uh, behind the scenes more often. <laughs> yeah, Drew's usually the one that's behind the scenes making sure everything runs. So you, you don't even know he's there most of the time. Now we're putting the spotlight on, on Drew. So uh, as you're just joining in, um, welcome. Thank you so much for spending an hour with us. We're gonna get started here in just a sec. Um, I think the other slide, Drew, has the, the questions on it. Slide two. Um, anyways, uh, what we're hoping for you to do is just introduce yourself. And um, yeah, so it's, I have it, sorry, slide one, Drew. Um, there, we go. there you go. Yeah, so introduce yourself in the chat. Where are you from? What organization? And if you're considering some kind of virtual event, that'd be great. Oh, we have another one uh, from Oliver. Great. There we go. Um, so don't be shy. Uh, it would be great if you just share where you're from. There we go. Thank you, Laura. Um, you an annual gala. Great. Physical auction and raffle revenue. Uh, those revenue streams are a gala. This is awesome. Yeah, no, we can definitely help with that for sure. There we go, Jen. Thanks for joining, Jen. Emily from BC. Louise from Oliver. Wow. Excited, all the Oliver. All right, and we have lots more people joining in, so we'll just uh, wait a little bit longer and let everyone join, and then we'll uh, probably get started in, in two to three minutes. So for the people that just joined again, we would love to hear where you're from, what organization, and if you're considering any events uh, virtually. All right, lots of BC representation today. That's exciting to see. There we go. Welcome, Cora. Nice, Hope Center and Welland, there we go. We've, uh, yeah, we had a very successful actually champion fundraiser just at Christmas time for the Welland Food Bank. So all the different ones in the area. So it's good to see more people from Welland, welcome. All right. Yeah, so we were saying as I'm seeing more people roll in, uh, Drew is uh, usually the one making these Zoom experiences really smooth. So you don't even know he's there as your virtual uh, fundraisers are going on. So now we're putting the spotlight on him today. So uh, I'm really excited because I wanna learn uh, the magic and he's gonna share us the magic of what really makes a good virtual event because he's spent probably tens or hundreds of hours doing this more than everyone else here. So. Um, yeah, make sure 
uh, you ask your questions. I'm going to look out for them as well. And also, uh, we will, this is being recorded. We're going to send you the recording because I know when Drew gets into the meat of it, you're going to want to review it. If you're anything like me, pause it, go back. So we'll make sure you get that as well. All right, we got Saskatchewan representing now too, Ontario, BC. That's awesome. Great to see. So this is our little virtual community for the next hour. So thank you so much for joining. Um, and I'm just looking at the attendees. Great. It looks like we're waiting for just a couple more individuals. So we'll just let them roll in and then I'll get started in the next couple seconds for again those people that are new just introduce yourself in the chat so we can see where everyone's coming from today we have some we have some shy people today don't worry um, we're all friendly here so if you do want to share you can if not that's okay um, we will make sure that you get a lot of value here so all right so without further ado um, I would like to introduce um, the, the webinar today and then get out of the way so we can listen to the expert Drew. Um, so if you just want to go to the next slide, Drew, for me, that'd be great. So what Trellis is doing this year is we are trying to help you navigate 2021 because it's just like 2020, it's a different world. So what we're calling it is the year of the modern fundraiser. And that's our focus this year. We want to help modernize you um, you know, everyone here is doing great things. We just want to maybe help you add a, add a little bit more and become more modern, more innovative, maybe, and connect with even more donors and take this crisis and turn it into an amazing opportunity, which I know everyone here is already. Um, so with, uh, just introduce myself. My name is Justin Goodhue. I founded Trellis three years ago, and I founded it by traveling across Canada, going to the conferences and talking to people like you and hearing what you needed what was working, what wasn't working. And then we built our software around that. And since then, a lot of things have changed and we've been adjusting to that and iterating quickly to make sure you have the product you need and working with great partners like Drew. Um, last two weeks ago, we did one on peer-to-peer -peer and how peer-to-peer -peer fundraising, especially in this virtual digital world is actually a great opportunity. And this, this week, we're really excited to have Drew Vincent with us. So Drew Vincent is the founder at the Stay at Home uh, Gala Fundraising. And what he is exceptional at is trying to get that virtual experience to your donors so they enjoy it. They want to come back and do it again, which I love how Drew focuses on that. It's not a one-time thing. He's trying to build long-term donor engagement. Um, and he's done it from the very beginning. Drew called me a week after COVID hit and he said, I just want to help our community. And then what he did is he created the stay-at-home gala for Kelowna. And before you know it, he did it on the national scale and now he's raised over $2 million. And he's gonna tell you that story of how that happened so that you can see the progression of what's occurred. And then he's gonna tell you all the tips and tricks. So hopefully you don't make some of the mistakes we did at the start back in March, because holy smokes, did we learn a lot. So with all that being said, I'm humbled. I got shivers. I'm really excited uh, to learn from Drew. So I'm gonna stop talking and I'm gonna pass it off to Drew. And please feel free to ask questions. We'll watch out for them. So thank you so much, Drew, it's off to you. Well, thank you so much. It's uh, really great to be in here. And, and it's always nice when you have somebody introduce you with a, a, a nice intro like that. So um, yeah, it, it's, it's amazing to be able to talk to people uh, about what we do. Um, obviously, it's, it's a thing that we're really proud of. But um, we've kind of found those, those tips and tricks, those things to be able to make it easy. Uh, I don't know about you, but I attend a lot of virtual events and um, always trying to learn and there's a really big mixture out there and, and different scale on what works, what doesn't work. Uh, and today, just excited to talk to you a little bit about what has happened. So I'm gonna actually start this out with a poll here, uh, just two questions to keep it nice and quick. Um, first one, have you enjoyed virtual events? How have you enjoyed the virtual events you've attended? And be honest, um, uh, we really wanna know kind of what your experience has been like. And then the second poll in there um, is, are you considering a virtual event to replace an existing event or to create a new event? Um, so while that's coming in um, and while people are getting there, I know it always takes a, a moment for people to, to get to their computers. Um, I'm just going to kind of jump in and, and talk a little, little bit about the agenda today. So um, first, uh, we'll share a little bit about who we are, uh, our team of stay at home fundraising, uh, and then we'll jump right into the meat of it and the, the success to the secrets to success for your virtual events. Um, engagement. I mean, we would have written engagement, 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 but that would have made a very boring webinar, uh, but we cover off 
um, engagement, giving, obviously all of you are, are here to fundraise money. Um, giving is an important piece of that uh, during the evening leading up to it and, and those elements. And then MC selection, um, and, and you'll see exactly why we've, we've kind of pitched those in there. Uh, then we're gonna go into the live event design example. So um, if any of you would like to, later on in the show, we'll invite uh, anyone to join me. Uh, we're just gonna talk about it and go through a really, really quick version of what we do and how we kind of break down events and talk about how to make those virtual and engaging. So, uh, and then finally we finish up, we've got a, a special offer from us and from Trellis today for everybody that's been attending. So um, first, what we all know, uh, in-person events have shifted for the foreseeable future. Uh, what we're now finding out um, is that they're, they're here to stay for virtual events and hybrid events. Uh, raising funds for your event and, and hosting events, it's a new skill set. And I know that a lot of you have a tremendous amount of experience with events, with fundraisers, with things like that. Um, and it's just a, a tweak to some of those, an addition of new, new information. It was the same when you first started doing events. This is something to uh, build it in. Um, and then most interestingly, uh, we do a lot of survey data. Uh, we try to get as much as possible and uh, virtual and hybrid events are here to stay. So. 85% of our attendees were positive or neutral about virtual events moving forward, uh, setting things like it was easier for them to get to. They didn't, you know, maybe geographically, they wouldn't have been able to make it. Um, surprisingly, a lot of them said uh, that they didn't really love the event in the first place, but they wanted to support. And this gave them a really easy opportunity to go and do so. And then, um, you know, the, the other side is, how do you create a series of events? Uh, so we've got this, this number here. and This is probably one of the most important numbers for our team. Uh, we want you to be exceptionally successful with your first fundraiser. But as a lot of you know, with fundraising, um, it comes from past relationships. It comes from all the work that you've done to build those in. We want to make sure that that continues on. All it takes is a kind of one failed event to lose a lot of your audience and trust you've built. So um, of our events, uh, all the ones that we've surveyed, 98% of the people said that they would attend again. And the lowest ranking we've ever had for an event was 92%. And for us, that's the thing that really matters is we don't want you to run one event. We want you to be able to continue to run more after this and continue to fundraise for your needs. So um, our team and about, uh, so we ran 44 different virtual events in 2020 uh, and raised nearly $2 million. We're experiencing creating engaging events and recurring virtual events. And like I said, that 98% rate, um, that's, that's so critical for us. And then a multitude of uh, streaming platforms. So each event's gonna be different. And you'll see that through today of how do you go and create virtual events? Uh, myself, my background with, with Ironman, large scale events, as well as a whole host of events locally here in Kelowna. Um, Charity, uh, Charity was one of the early members on our team and kind of gave us the tips and tricks of how do you create online engagement? Uh, she was with Disney Interactive for many years um, and that ability to see how do you get people to engage? One of the tips she gave us was uh, you used to have to worry about how people got home from the event. Now you have to worry about how people get to the event. Um, Tim, Tim's one of our producers. He's out of Vancouver. Uh, he works with CBC as well as a whole host of others. Um, and he's currently pitching a, 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 a getting a pilot live for a t TV show. Um, Tim comes at it from a, a screen perspective of how is this going to engage on the screen? How are people going to enjoy it? Um, and then Katie Krebs. So Katie's our, our fundraising lead and um, kind of the, the right hand of the stay at home fundraising. So where it all began, um, came up with a, a crazy idea to host a stay at home fundraiser. And um, we did a stay at home gala. And as Justin mentioned, I, I called him, no idea how. Uh, we just kind of had a, an idea to host an event where people could come and engage. Uh, came up with the idea March 16th. And then 11 days later, we hosted the first one uh, with the idea of let's try it out. Let's see how it goes. And, and then maybe we go and we do a bigger one. And uh, we were really excited. Uh, originally, we thought if we raised $5,000, it would be a big success. And uh, almost $23,000 later, it really blew us away and um, not only in the fundraising aspect, but also in the, the community that was formed there and the excitement. It was a scary time. None of us knew what was happening and we wanted to go in and, and do something special. And, and it really was special. Um, from there, we went and did the national stay at home gala. Uh, so this was with the Community Foundations of Canada. We were in 22 communities across Canada with more than 5,000 people attending and raised over half a million dollars. And 
it was a, a very different experience where we actually coached each community into running their own local streams while we put together a national broadcast with um, uh, Hall of Famer Haley Wickenheiser, Dragon's Den, Lane Merrifield, Tanika Charles. Uh, we even had uh, the, the Corgi, I can't remember his name here, but, um, and not even the Corgi. Uh, but we just had a lot of fun with it. And you saw all these communities. And, and again, we surveyed all of those and they were all very different and all very unique to their communities. And that's the thing that made them very special. And um, today we're gonna talk a little bit about those secrets. So the three keys to a successful virtual event, um, as we mentioned, engagement, both for audience and sponsors. Uh, we'll talk a bit about sponsors today in, in some detail about how that's uh, really the, the easy money for you. Um, and then number two, multiple income streams. You want to really focus on diverse fundraising that comes from it, both day of, advanced, and post. Uh, and then number three is the MC selection. So um, before we jump into those, I want to bring up the poll here just to see kind of the, the audience that we have. So um, how have you enjoyed them? Uh, again, a lot of you say mediocre. Um, I've been to a lot of them. Uh, I've experienced terrible. I've experienced outstanding. It's, it's kind of a new world out there and everybody's trying to, to learn it. And then the next one, uh, we've got some honest people here, three of you saying that you have no idea what the plan is and, and that's very okay as well, but uh, a lot of you trying to bring an existing event on. So we're gonna talk about how you go and create these events now. How do you go and make them engaging? Um, and how do you make this happen? So the first thing, and this is especially uh, true for everybody that is planning to bring an existing event online is that Virtual events are very different than in-person events. You need to think about them in a different perspective. You can take inspiration, take traditions, take those and bring them in, but you really have to shift your brain to say, I'm not doing an event, I'm doing a broadcast. Where we take ideas from used to be other events, big events, Cirque du Soleil, hockey games, whatever it was. Now you're taking it from YouTube, you're taking it from uh, TV shows, you're, you're just taking that. You get a whole new opportunity to engage people and it's important to do that. Um, and then the second one is we're starting to, to work on some hybrid events. Um, hybrid events are different completely. How do you engage two different audiences that are supposed to share an experience? And, um, but yeah, it's, it's really just important to, to be in that mindset of let's create something new. Let's take the existing, let's take the inspiration, let's take all those, but let's channel this into to a great space. So the first piece with, with engagement is your sponsorship. Um, so we talk about innovative, innovative sponsor packages and moments. With us, 100% of sponsors that we surveyed said that they received more value than they anticipated. 85 felt that they received more value than they would have in an in-person event and 100% would sponsor again. And I know all of you that go out and shop sponsorship, um, that last number of saying that they're coming back again, so critical. So how we do that is you wanna build in new opportunities. Don't, right now has never been easier to get sponsorship. A lot of businesses are getting less event proposals and the ones that they're getting are usually not that great. A lot of them are coming and saying, we'll put your logo here, your logo here, social media shout outs, maybe a newsletter, all the traditional things, but you need to build in special things into the show. So uh, one of the things that we do is we, we bring them into the show. So we've got an event coming up in the fall and we're having a, it's a culinary focus uh, for it. And we're actually having the sponsors participate in, in like a top chef cook off where uh, they're all gonna be doing chopping exercises and they're gonna be, but, they, we talked to them and they were excited about these elements. So we built it around that and we talked with them about how we can go and do this. But now instead of a shameless plug that they go and they do, now they're coming out and actually a part of the show in a way that doesn't seem forced. Uh, another one that we do is we go in and we call it a sponsor uh, blitz. So the sponsor blitz, uh, we just say, okay, everybody for the next two minutes or the next 20 minutes or the next two hours, whatever the choice is, uh, we're really excited. Trellis is going to match all of your donations. Uh, it might not be Trellis, but whatever your sponsor is. And during that time, you're giving them shout outs, you're giving them an opportunity to speak, but you're also kind of leveraging their sponsorship to get more donations in. And our sponsors have been really positive about that. In the sponsor packages, we just write, uh, you can be the title sponsor of the Donor Blitz. Uh, the, our partners are getting a lot of calls saying, what's the Donor Blitz? And if it starts the conversation, then that's a great place to kick it off. Uh, and then finally, a, an easy one is every event we do now has awards. If you didn't give away awards before, you should really be giving away an, uh, awards now. With the awards, we're saying that this is the KPMG Legacy Award for your charity. Um, and it's gonna be presented by them. Someone from KPMG comes on, 
talks about why this event's so important, why they support the charity. It's an opportunity for a seamless, shameless plug. And it really fits within the event. And that's what we talk about with engagement is you want everything to flow nicely and, and look like it's a real part of it and not just trying to get sponsored dollars in. The next piece <coughs> is under understanding the attention span. Um, I'm sure all of you at some point already have probably reached for your phone and are considering, you know, an email or considering a text or maybe Instagram. Um, I'm not seeing the numbers drop down. So thankfully you're not leaving, but it's just being really realistic about what people's attention span is when there's no one supervising them. You used to be in a gala and you had a very strong speaker and maybe some people weren't into it, but if you started texting while you were at the table, you kind of got a dirty look. Now there's none of that. So you just need to be aware of how that dynamic's gonna change. We used to say that a, a 90 or a 40 minute keynote is now maybe a 10 minute keynote at most. Uh, we very, very, very seldom exceed a 10 minute. Even then we seldom exceed a five minute speaker. You wanna keep these going, keep them on a, a good pace. Um, we do the 90, 10 rule for us. 90% felt the event was just right and 10% felt the event was too short. If you give people that excitement of participating in an event and it finishes and they're like, oh, it's over already, there's a very fine line between, oh, it's overall road ready and man, when is this going to end? Err on the side of caution. Keep people excited. Again, you've gotten the bulk of your work done with, with the main show at most 90 minutes, uh, but you just really want to keep it concentrated and keep them excited and then give them that opportunity to leave. Um, and then as we talked about before, 98% satisfaction with all of our events. And, and it's really a, a key piece. So a couple of, of moments that you can include in here. Um, one is active participation. So, uh, you know, things even as simple as polls, uh, they can invite the audience into it, getting people to use the chat. Those things really matter. Um, now, I know that everybody here has signed up and they're trying to learn something. So it's coming from a slightly different angle than if you were a gala. The chance for people to bid, to auction, all of those are going to be important pieces of, of the engagement as well. Uh, levity is far greater than a heavy speaker. We used to rely on a very powerful message during the fundraiser that brought people in, it made them, it appealed to the heartstrings. Maybe the boot got passed around and you threw some money in or a check in. You don't have that same tool anymore. And if you put heavy, heavy concepts out where people are feeling bad, then they're not getting the reinforcement of feeling bad as a group. Psychologically, it's a very different experience when we're witnessing that at home um, than we are in person. So keeping it upbeat, keeping it happy and celebrate. Almost all of our events are under a celebration theme. Talk about the things that you've done, capture that wave of people that are excited about all the things you've done and brag, brag as much as you can. If you're talking about all those wonderful people that you've helped and even having some examples of that, People are going to be a part of that wave that just wants to give and see more of it. I see that my dollars are making an impact. Here's some more dollars. Uh, the third one, again, keep it powerful and short. Um, we'll talk a bit about it, but uh, we, we always say give people an invitation to come, give people an invitation to give, and give people an invitation to leave. Um, you want people to come, be there for the big portions, um, and let them leave when the time comes that it makes sense for them. Sometimes we have a second part of the event where we'll say, hey, everybody, thanks for joining. And we'll actually do it at the end today. Uh, that's the main part of the event. Um, now, if you want to stick around, here's the things that are going to be happening. But we know you're busy and we want to let you leave. People are happy that you've given them that and they didn't have to click that, that leave button prematurely. So just be mindful um, and break it up with more clips. Have lots of little segments, entertainers, have um, highlight reels, have little videos, have live speakers, but lots of little things. So therefore, if, if somebody isn't really connecting with a speaker or a moment, it's kind of capped at five minutes of where they can zone out. If you get too deep and somebody's really disengaged from the whole show, then you stand the chance of really losing them in there. Uh, the next one for engagement is create FOMO moments for those who didn't attend. Um, and again, 92% lowest satisfaction ranking ever. Uh, most of our events are 100% ranking. Um, this one, you want to create magic moments. Um, so there's going to be those few things that people talk about on Monday. No one's going to go in and be like, oh, they had a bunch of speakers and it was great. And, and it was there. Or very few will. What you want to do is give them the tool to go in and brag about the event and tell everybody else about it. And that only needs two or three events, two or three moments through the show that's really going to be captivating for them. So 
One of those ones is home deliveries. <clears throat> With home deliveries, um, what we do is, was we had an event in Kelowna actually and a city councilor rode around in a sponsored vehicle and then popped in live. And again, everything we do is, is as live as possible. And then while they're walking up the, the driveway with a camera following her and she's got a big gift basket, the people inside are watching someone walking up their front steps. Um, they pop their head out, everybody gets really excited, everybody gets um, all kinds of, of happy and you watch somebody else receive and have that joy. Even though you didn't receive it, you're still like, wow, they really care about us at home. They went the extra mile and you wanna do as many of those as possible or as many powerful moments as possible, but, but two or three during an event of just something special, that's gonna create a real sense that this event wasn't um, in lieu of an, an in-person event. It's really its own standalone thing and it's creating these, these memorable moments that people are gonna want for a long time. It's because of these elements that we're finding our partners are talking about that they're going to continue on with virtual events. Even, even once they're able to go back to in-person um, hybrid events, but also virtual events are, are definitely here to stay because you can create new things. I'm going to jump over. Um, multiple income streams. Now, you're here to make money. The entertainment of the show is to maybe make a little bit more money. The entertainment of the show is to give you a reason to make money and it's to give people a reason to come back the next time. These tools you want to build in, but over 30% of event revenue comes from ad additional event activities during your event, donations, fundraisers. It's so critical to put these together and put them together well. Um, so multiple income streams, sponsor tickets and sponsorship and ticket sales. Uh, this is, sorry, I'm jumping onto the chat. I always coach all of the speakers. Do not watch the chat while it's happening because uh, nobody can do it without getting sidetracked and, and I'm closing the window now. So Justin's on top of it, thankfully, but um, sponsorship and ticket sales. Like I said, sponsorship has never been easier than ever. If you put a good sponsor package in front of a sponsor, they're going to want to participate in your event because they need to find that exposure during, rate, during the time right now. Um, and you need to give them that opportunity. So. A couple of keys with both ticket sales and sponsorship. Go to your existing audience. 90% of the ticket sales went to people that were already supporters of the charity. That's why they bought tickets. Um, it can be really simple. You don't have to worry about the marketing as much. You don't have to pay for AdWords. You, don't, you can just have a very simple event and market to everybody you already have relationships with. And those are where most of your ticket sales are going to come from. Um, the next one, tiered ticket pricing. I never imagined that this would be as successful as it has been, but for every event, choose your ticket price, whether that's $25 or $125, and then add two more ticket prices on top of that. So we, the very first one we did, we did 25, 100, and 1,000. And really there was no substantial difference. 100 got your name on the wall of champions um, and 1,000 got you a mention on stage. Uh, and they didn't even want the mention on stage. Most people don't. As people are buying, they're buying to support your organization. They are very consciously buying because they love what you do and they want to support. If you give them that opportunity to give a little bit more in that moment of purchase, then you will, with almost every event we've done, we've had at least one or two people buy that $1,000 ticket. I mean, do the math on a $25 ticket. That's a huge jump in ticket sales that comes in. Um, thankfully, Trellis makes it really easy for us when we go and we set those up and we've got your taxable receipts and you can actually have that count as part of a donation if it's over and above. So um, just be mindful that people want to give you money, give them the opportunity. Um, and that's that, that third point there. So both ticket sales and sponsorship, um, give them the opportunity to give you money and they will give. Um, now, live and silent auction, uh, this could be a whole presentation on its own, and I believe actually uh, in, in two weeks it is, but um, focus some really good attention on creating this in the show. It will not only bring you in uh, more dollars, but it's also really going to create a strong opportunity for engagement and fun, and we've had some really good times with live auctions, um, and these are parts of a show. The shows should always fit together and seem like it spoke like it, it couldn't have been any other way. That's that design process that you go through. Um, but focus on large, intangibly priced items. If I have a two hundred dollar chair and I try to go and sell a two hundred dollar chair, very few people are going to pay five hundred dollars for it. 
But if I have a weekend for two that includes some things and people can't do that math really quickly, um, now you're gonna be seeing multiples of that. The one exception uh, is, is one of our partners every year auctions off a pie and the pie sells for thousands of dollars. Uh, so you, know, you can keep those moments within your show, but you really want to give people the excitement of I might be a part of something really amazing. Have a mix of big and small items. Um, yes, you want the bulk of them to be big items. That's where you're going to make a bunch of money. But there's a bunch of people that can't always afford those. And you want to allow for some really fun things to be a part of it um, that they can just be bidding on. And there's excitement when you get outbid and you get that notification saying that I've been outbid um, or when you win at the end of it. I get a package later on from the charity that I've supported with my item. And, and that's just a really cool thing. Uh, open it early and close it late. So there's an, a level of excitement during the night of when people are, uh, are participating in the auction and um, you're gonna capture that. But if you open it a bit early, people will start sharing that with their loved ones, with their friends. They'll start saying like, oh, I've got a bid on this one and, and give them that chance, but give them a chance to bid early. And then when the night comes, it's already kind of happening. And then we've had uh, you know, good success with keeping it open uh, longer, at least for some of the items, uh, because then the bidding stays on for the next day. Now you won't get a ton of extra bids typically following the event, uh, but you will continue to see it. And, and every dollar is a dollar more that you, you would have had before. So um, practice, practice sessions for live auctions. There is a technological leap. People used to put their hand up. That's fairly easy for most people. Now you have to go through and it's it's still so easy, but you always got to let people catch up. We did an event early on. We were using the live auction feature um, and we found that it was like kind of starting out slow. So we paused for a while. The auctioneer was an absolute pro, um, which will be the next point. But uh, he kind of saw that the, the auction item wasn't really thriving. So we paused, we filled in for a while. And then we saw in the chat that a few people were saying like, wait, 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 we're trying to get on. So give people a chance to go and bid early. Uh, we put up a dummy auction sometimes ahead of it and we have people just clicking away and it's exciting and, but there's no money exchanged. It's just all in one cent increments or $1 increments and it's a donation basically. But that gets everybody into it so that they've now proven that they've got the phone. You can even link that up to a sponsor and say that every every person that bids on this, the sponsor is going to pay an extra five dollars. And then that way people are motivated to use the tool, because um, once you get them through that door, now getting them to bid more is really, really strong. And then finally, uh, hire professionals. I cannot stress this enough. Auctions are an absolute art form. Uh, the professionals that we've worked with have taught us so much. We've saw, seen really phenomenal things. Having someone there that knows how to read the, the room and knows how to motivate people and give them the time, that's going to be so, so critical. So uh, just bear that in mind and give them the chance to really do uh, what they do best. But it's, it's a small investment for, for a potentially large outcome, and we highly advise it. Um, and then finally, donations and gaming. One of our events, we're looking to do a poker tournament. It's for a firefighters association or charitable society. Um, and it's something that really fits that market. So can we do a charity, online charity poker tournament following the event? Um, a raffle, 50-50 key draws. Uh, one of the ones that we're working on now is, is everybody's gonna get a chance to buy a uh, Tiffany's box. And it's gonna be delivered to them. And then they're all gonna open it during the night. And we're gonna read out which number was the winning number. And that person's won a Tiffany's piece of jewelry. Um, so create those fun moments that you used to in new and innovative ways. And you'll see people really successful and, and, and really happy about your event. Uh, and then finally, home package openings. We, I get excited about an Amazon package. I ordered it and paid for it. Um, I know it's coming. It tells me the moment it's supposed to arrive and I still get excited for it. Imagine this excitement when people register for your event and you either have it fully listed of what they get or partially or not at all. We've done some mystery boxes that have been really successful. People opening that up and having fun, you can bring them on. They can have, you know, one of them uh, was a, a chef's hat because it was a culinary program. There, there's just so much you can do. And when you take that time to really think about what someone sitting at home is gonna feel like with it, that's where you, you really start to have a lot of fun with it and have fun with it. Plan a two hour session with your team, sit down and just come up with crazy, crazy ideas. That's where you're going to find really great opportunities. That's where things are going to come in um, and, and just be creative with it. 
Uh, and then again, at the bottom here, um, you know, invite people to come to the event, invite people to give, and then invite them to leave. If you don't have any of these columns or any of these items, you will not make money from them. Um, but if you have a silent auction and if you have a 50-50 and you have these, people will give. Um, how much? There's some nuances within that, but people will give if you have them. So just try to make sure that you build in those opportunities because people, again, people are coming to give you money. That's why they're coming to this event. Um, more so than ever, they know that you need it. They know the work that you're doing and they want to give you money. Give them that excuse to give you money. Uh, so here's two examples of, uh, of some silent auction items. So the African carved wooden, wooden round salad bowl with serving spoons. Uh, again, that's like, oh, it's unique. It was very applicable to the charity. Uh, it was a lot of fun. Um, I ended up bidding on it and winning it. Uh, I, I now get a, a lot of joy when I make a salad. Um, and then the other one was a lightly used in-kind chair. Now it's still got a few hundred dollars. The one on the left went for above the asking price. The one on the right went for far below the, the value. Give people those intangible goods. How do you put a price on an item that was from the community of the charity? How do you do that versus something that you can literally Google and say, this is the price. I'm not, I'm not gonna spend $1,000 on a $700 chair. So you just wanna make it so that it's really clear um, and give them a lot of fun. And then finally, uh, this one fits under engagement, but it's so critical that, that it really deserves its own section here. Uh, MC selection. Your show will be kicked off, carried and finished by your MC. Having a quality MC is very clear. We've seen a ton of events. The MC that you choose will be the distinction. I know that a lot of our partners um, always want to use somebody from the board or they want... Give them a speaking moment where there can be a powerful moment where they're there. It's actually more potent when that person gets their, their moment um, and it's focused on them. But your MC is really going to be such a critical piece of the show and go in and just be really conscious. Do they fit your community? Do they have a relationship with your community and your audience and your charity? Um, that's the person that, that can really convey that messaging and work with them in advance. We meet with every single speaker, every single entertainer, anyone who's going to be on screen, whether live or pre-recorded, we meet with them in advance. We go through, we coach them on how to set up lighting, how to enunciate, how, like, how are they going to be there and how are they comfortable just to be themselves while on camera. Your MC, we do multiple sessions. We, they're the first person we talk to. And then we also talk to them at the end because in talking with all of our performers, we find little opportunities and we, we really bring it together. So we've got Aaron Sebula. Uh, Aaron was our host for our national stay at home gala. Um, and it, it, was, it was so powerful having somebody who could really convey and connect to all the speakers, who could introduce them well, who could fill in those moments. It, it was so important for that. And then you see down on the right, um, Steve Darling on the, the top left, but he's speaking with Aaron Prechette. They had this fun conversation. Um, Steve's got a background. If any of you are from, from Vancouver, he was with Global News and uh, he's got a background in broadcasting. So he gets how the broadcasting portion works and he nailed it. It was funny. It was engaging. He was on top of it. Um, so the second point here, the third point or first and second points, like the, the MC is what will set your show up. The third, the unforeseen challenges, whether in person or live, there will always be things that come up. Somebody's mic doesn't work. Somebody's, there's always got to be a backup plan and a backup plan to that. Your MC is your backup plan. They jump in, they can say, oh, you know what? We're having some technical difficulty. Having them be able to be fluid and know what that experience is like, it's, it's worth a million dollars for any event. It's so critical. Um, and then the next one of unforeseen opportunities. So we ran an event and um, they, as part of the showcase, there was a, a culinary program that uh, they were glazing this cake and it was this beautiful cake. And it was like something you would see on an Instagram uh, food channel. And they poured all this like chocolate on it and smeared it and it ran off and the chat went crazy. Like it was, we've never seen the chat light up for something like that did. And people were like, I want that out. So we just made the decision right there. Well, let's, let's live auction it. Um, so we, we quickly, positioned it, the host jumped in, uh, or the MC jumped in and said, okay, you know what, we're, we're breaking away from this section. We had this thing planned. We're going to delay that. It sounds like people want this cake. So I want to know how bad you want this cake. We ended up raising $700 because people were going over crazy over this cake. 
again, that $700 that wouldn't have come otherwise, but our MC was with, without missing a beat. It seemed like it was part of the show and it was planned. And that's where you want to focus it. So now, uh, if we have any volunteers, um, just in the chat, drop, uh, drop your name and, and your charity. We want to bring someone out and we're just going to talk about uh, your event. So we can talk about what's the background of your organization, your rough concept, an attendee description, um, and, and a bit of a history. I'll, I'll lead you through it. Don't worry. It's not complicated. But we can jump in and I'll, I'll bring you up and we'll talk. Um, and look at what your event is. Uh, now, we'll, we'll try to keep this relatively short, um, but, uh, but you can see kind of how we position things, how we reposition them, how we take an existing idea or element, turn it into something live, um, and, and just try to convey that message as, as good as possible. So um, we'll, we'll let anybody that's brave enough to jump on come into the chat here, um, but I'll, I'll talk a little bit about the process. Um, before any event that we do, um, and I'll actually jump to our, our next slide of what our process looks like when we do events. We go in, we set up a, a goals and kickoff. How do we match up with your, oh, I saw a comment from, from Laura in the questions. Was the $700 cake a 200 plus gala or the 5,000? Uh, so this event would have been about 130 people, I believe. Um, so it wasn't a, a huge one. Uh, most of our events are under 200 people. Uh, just realistically knowing uh, what you end up doing with an event. Um, 5,000 person events are great. We're planning one right now that's likely to be 7,500. Uh, it's a whole new set of headaches. But the 100, 200 person galas, those ones still make you a, a good amount of money and you can really engage your audience with that. It doesn't need to be huge events. Um, but here's our, our process when we go in. Um, and I'll, I'll talk through this. If we if we don't get somebody that's really interested in jumping in to, uh, to do a live one, we can just talk a little bit about it. But, um, oh, here we go. Um, <laughs> now we're getting everybody starting to jump in late, but we'll, uh, I'm gonna talk the process and then I'm gonna choose one of our attendees to promote into a panelist here and um, and go in. But the, the goals and kickoff. So I meet with every organization before we meet with our official brainstorming session. And I try to understand, I do a SWOT analysis. Uh, what's the history of the event? What's What are the opportunities that lay in front of it? Um, and then I take that back to our team. And I, now that my team knows the history, the organization, and we've got a starting chance to, when we jump into those brainstorms, uh, we're really hitting it with our ground, hitting it with the ground moving, jumping on that one. But um, it's really just kind of setting it up. Then we go in and we do a minimum of three brainstorms. The first one, um, and I encourage all of you to follow this, this same pattern. It's, it's one that we've learned over uh, many years with consulting and with our team's backgrounds. And um, but the first one is wide open, blue sky. Let's talk about crazy ideas. We never say no, and we never say how. Early on, how can kill a good idea? Um, but if you bring people in and you can create something fun and you can, um, you know, come up with these crazy ideas, something crazy might find its way into the event if you let it a chance. So, uh, and then we go in and we narrow it down. And finally, by the last brainstorm, we've got it right down to what's the title, subtitle and description. So uh, I see Lyle was the first person here uh, to, to volunteer. So I'm gonna promote Lyle in. Um, I hope you uh, are, are dressed for the occasion here, Lyle. Um, promote you into panelist. But, uh, but we can go through and talk about it. So Studio, Studio 9 Independent School, um, and they've had a gala before, so we can talk about it. All right. Hi, Lyle. Hi there. How are you doing today? Great. Very excited to talk to you about, uh, learn a little bit about the event and, and see what we can do in a, a bit here. Okay. So I'm going to stop the share. Um, so Lyle, maybe if you can start off and, and just share a little bit about what is the event and um, how can we, you know, what would we work with and, and what are you looking to do? What's the goal to accomplish? Well, we're, we're Studio 9 Independent School of the Arts. Um, and historically, we've had a, an in-person gala, always at a nice location, usually one of the, the beautiful golf courses or something. It's here in Kelowna. And we, we have, um, the kids do a lot of art, obviously. Um, and so we have an art auction. Um, the kids do a lot of dance and music. So we'll have them entertained 
Um, we always have a beautiful meal. Um, we have um, a uh, silent auction. Um, and, and that event can't happen anymore. And it's obviously to fund the school. Yeah, absolutely. The, uh, what kind of entertainment would you typically have for it? Well, uh, normally we, we really focus on the kids, you know, dance and music. Um, and then we'll have an MC, usually one of the local radio personalities. Okay. So we do find really good success with uh, radio personalities continuing because a radio personality, uh, again, they're not in, in video broadcast, although a lot of them now are, are doing some video work, uh, but they get how to flow, how to, how to change. So continuing on with that works out great. Um, I'm going to bring up this slide again. We're just going to go kind of heading through heading here uh, and talk about each of these sections um, and a little bit about it. So speaker and entertainers, entertainment selection. Um, I would say, you, you know, you definitely want to have somebody, the classic elements, somebody that's going to be talking in um, and talking about your organization, talking about the impact, thanking everybody for coming. Uh, and again, this is celebrating. Uh, here's what we do. Here's the amazing things that come out of it. Um, not the, if we don't get funding, this isn't going to happen or, uh, but keeping it really positive. Um, entertainment. If you have some post grads who have gone through the program yeah. or anybody, uh, those are always really wonderful. And folks, yeah, we've got some recording artists. Oh, see, and that's perfect. Um, yes. Your alumni, because they're going to come in and speak. Anybody who's been involved with an organization, when they come in and they speak about what happened, how it impacted them, and they can give a really positive uh, experience where it's fun, that's, that's always a really big win there. Um, and don't be afraid to branch outside of, of your immediate audience there, uh, knowing that the bulk of the people that are coming want to see the kids performing, they want to see, um, you know, the, the success of that, but uh, don't be afraid if you do find some great performing artists, then, then that's going to be positive. Now, for a lot of our events, um, our very first event, we had a bartender come in and the bartender set up his, his phone and he, he zoomed in and he kind of leaned on the bar and he talked to you like you were at the bar and then he made a cocktail and showed everybody. Maybe not a, a fit for this um, or maybe for the parents, but um, having some sort of a demo can always be really positive. So if you're an artistic organization, having a simple thing that we can all take at home, whether it's uh, a draw, drawing exercise, we did a kids festival and they taught people, you know, draw these circles, now draw these and everybody was drawing beautiful characters and cartoons. But having things that people can participate at home can really bring in a lot of fun elements that people are now starting to uh, feel like they're really a part of the event. So you, you tell them ahead of time, this is what to expect. This is how you're going to uh, engage in the evening, have this ready, or uh, you, you deliver that all as part of a ticket price. Um, there's, there's a package. Delivered. But those can all be really fun. Um, and then bringing those art moments into it uh, throughout of, you know, maybe a, a live auction piece is getting to go out with an artist and, and do a graffiti wall if they're doing a, a large mural in town or those experiences is part of the entertainment, especially if that entertainer can be a part of the auction. They've already won people over and proven it. They've done a live painting. Um, I've always wanted, uh, and, and it looks like we're going to do it with a, a local event here, but have my favorite, favorite artist locally, um, try to get her to paint a piece and we can have that come on screen frequently and show people the progress and then live auction that at the end. And, you know, if you tie people into the charity, tie people into what's working or the organization, um, you'll kind of motivate them to connect to it. Uh, sponsor opportunities and sales. Uh, this one having awards, um, create new awards that you can now have sponsors participate, but a big community supporter, somebody that's been an advocate, somebody that's a great teacher, things like that. Sponsors love to be a part of those moments and, and they can really connect with it. Again, market to your existing audiences on, on how to get them in there. But, um, and then the donor blitz, uh, you know, we talked a bit about earlier, but, but always it's, it's a successful tool that we've seen work time and time again. Um, so if you found, you know, Grant Thornton and Grant Thornton was going to sponsor up to $5,000. And you said to everybody in the audience, Hey, for the next 10 minutes, uh, we've got 10 minutes. And if we do this 5,000 and, um, you know, 
this law firm came on board, if we reach that $5,000, uh, they're going to match it again. So we have a three to one, but we have to, and then you can kind of start laying some groundwork to get people really out there. Um, and your sponsors are excited again to be a part and be a really big part without it seeing, seeming shame, shameless. Um, special and unique moments, home deliveries, uh, art, something that's really, you know, dear to my, my heart. If you can create moments where uh, maybe you bring everybody on screen and everybody's contributed. I've attended some, some networking style events where uh, it's like, okay, everybody without lifting your pen and over the next 30 seconds, draw a parrot. Okay, let's see who's the winner. Okay, that's amazing. Uh, you've won this prize. So it's engaging people to participate. And you can do these in two formats, um, well, many formats, but uh, we do live, which is meeting style. So today we're webinar. Everybody there, unfortunately, you can't speak or be seen. Um, or you can do meeting and everybody's seen. And you can control who's muted and unmuted. Uh, you can get a little bit more control over what people see in webinar format. So we do prefer that. Um, but for certain events where it's a community-based thing, being seen can be really powerful. Uh, and then one thing we haven't talked about is uh, post-event receptions. There's some great tools um, and, and we'll, we'll include them in the notes on this when it gets into a Kumo space, Rally. Uh, they both allow you to go and network with people in a similar to an in-person experience where you can have small conversations, you can have big conversations, but post events, maybe some VIP ticket sales where people can go and participate in those um, and meet the artists or attend live art showings. Those are all really fun things that now create it to be a strong moment in there. Um, the streaming solutions, uh, we honestly, we just recommend Zoom for the vast majority of our events. Uh, we base our, our criteria for choosing technology on three items. One is the ease of adoption. So everybody here has likely used Zoom. They know how to get in. If people can't get to your event, it doesn't matter what technology you chose. The second one is the level of engagement we can create. There's some that are more engaging than Zoom, but there's some that are less engaging with Zoom. Uh, a live stream on Facebook, you can only comment and do emojis. Here there's polls. You can promote people in. You can have them on screen. There's a lot more things you can do. And then the third is, is cost and Zoom. It's, it's hard to beat Zoom for that, that cost value ratio that you get. Um, enhanced fundraising engagement. Uh, I know that, that you know, we're not paid by Trellis. We don't have any affiliation beyond. We just use Trellis for all of our technology. It has never been easier to do a silent or live auction. They built tech that's, that's perfect for it. Um, we keep using it for all of our events. It keeps working. Make sure you use those, but find good things to auction off. Again, art, uh, you'll get a bit of bids on student art, but- You'd be amazed how good some of it is. Yeah, it's, it's really, it is the caliber item. And if you can find some great caliber items, people will bid, but people have a weird ratio with art of how much they're willing to spend if the name isn't recognized, we find, or I found in, in some of our events. But, but if you do some art and then make it special for that event, um, one of the events we did was a, a quilt draw. So everybody bid on a, a quilt and you didn't actually get to have the quilt, but your square went on the quilt next year and that quilt just kept expanding year on year. So maybe an auction isn't actually getting the item in return. Maybe the auction is getting your name on the item or getting your, your contribution onto it. So it's a legacy. We all want, we all want to give because we want to support. We want to see people succeed. And, and sometimes there's some ego in there that wants to be recognized for that giving. And if you give people that chance um, and you can build a tradition, um, one of the things that we didn't talk about in the, the live auctions is always seed your live auctions. Talk to 10 people that are committed to bidding on a few things, pre-sell it so that when the auction kicks off, people are bidding like crazy, but you've already kind of had that happening so that you don't leave anything to chance. Um, but there's some really fun pieces within that, the auction and the items that you can do that make it special, make it unique, make it something that I can't go buy at the store. Certainly don't make it something that I can go buy in the store for cheaper. Um, but if you make it something that's so remarkably unique, like a commission, like this artist is gonna do a, a, a bust of you or whatever that might be. Those are special things that, that I can't get. Um, and then experiences. I know for me, cooking classes, art classes, 
uh, you know, we're, we're registering to do some ceramics and some blown glass. And if you have those tools, people love to do that. Give them a chance for a private session uh, with them and a group of friends. And it's got included dinner and some artistic creation. And maybe they make their own plates, whatever that is. Um, I'm sure that, that you have a lot more uh, know-how of, of what you're capable of. But give people the chance to have something that's unique and special. Um, so food and beverage. This is always the most uh, unique element. It can be the highest win. It's really special. When you get a hot meal delivered, it is such a special thing to know that you just got your hot meal and you're sitting down, but we've done it and it is a, an incredible amount of work. Um, we really do encourage you to put in the work where, where necessary and to not when not necessary. But the one end of the spectrum is everybody gets a hot meal delivered at their door at 6.05 PM, knock, knock, knock. Wow, that's incredible. We're all so grateful. Uh, you can have a deliveries up, you know, up leading up to the show. You can do cooking tutorials. You know, you've heard me talk about it. We've done a lot of shows that have um, not centered on cooking, but it's been a real compliment to the show. Whether it's a pre-show where you've got a celebrity chef guiding through through cooking their their um, meals, and we send that recording out and then have them finish it together. Um, or you can have people, the easiest uh, is you can say, hey, these three restaurants have special deals for you. If you go in, um, not only are you getting it for cheaper, but they're donating a, a portion of it this week. Or So there's some tools in there that you can choose. And we always say, make it so that initially you say that event sounds great and we know we can knock it out of the park. So meal delivery, don't take that on right away. Take on, unless it's an integral part of the show, take on okay, the, we can make this happen and it's going to be easy and get all of your categories to say, we can make this happen. And we're confident because you don't want to overwhelm yourself. But then once you get that set up now, go back and say, okay, what can we add into? What can we, so you've got your, your, your design. It all fits well together. It all makes sense, but then come back and add pieces on um, dessert delivery. We've seen that with some events and it depends on the scope, but if everybody, while they're watching the show, somebody's out there and you've got a team of people and they deliver little packages on every doorstep. And then during the show, you say, hey, everybody, go check your door. Uh, for most of you, we apologize to some that we couldn't get to, um, or, or for 20 of you or whatever that is, we've got a special dessert. These are fun things that you can do and, and make happen. Um, finally, ticket sales and fundraising. Uh, I mean, you're all here, Trellis put on this, this webinar. We have no commitment to them. Uh, we've just never found anything that has the tools and we've never found anything that's cheaper. And between those two things, um, they've made it so easy. The automated tax receipts, the ability to host all of your, your day of auctions and donations and, um, and streaming and like, it just makes it easy. Don't, don't work too hard when you don't have to. Um, but if you go and you set those up, get your ticket prices in there again, multi-ticket pricing, um, and give people the option to participate, um, at the level that they feel that they can, um, it just becomes really easy to go in and do that. And then the day of the event, um, this'll, this could be a whole other webinar, um, uh, keys for us. Uh, so never start a webinar uh, or a, a show, just just hard start. People show up and there's always that awkward silence and you're talking and you're trying to fill. We always start the show at least two minutes late, um, but we'll make it live five, 10 minutes early and then have video, have music, have entertainers. We've had guitarists playing and taking requests from the audience and playing little snippets. There's a lot of things that you can do, but just don't make it an awkward start. Uh, don't make it an awkward end. So we always have music. We play the Oscars music when it's over and we just roll the credits and we have people a thank you to sponsors. And, and you'd, you'd be surprised at how long people stay on the call and just chat. Um, but coach all your speakers. Uh, so meet all your speakers ahead of time. Make sure they know how to be on Zoom. Make sure they know how that they look good. Uh, you know, all those items really, really matter. Uh, invite them if they want to use polls. Um, they can use the polling feature. Uh, we use it with, you know, good success, but you, you use it sparingly. Um, and then the, the day of is just having a really clear run of show. What's coming on next? How is it coming in? Who's managing it? Uh, all of those things can make it... Um, 
you know, a lot easier. That's obviously what we get hired most of the time because people are terrified of the, the day of, um, but you know, there, there's some, some big pieces in there that can make it go a lot more smoothly. Um, and then wrap up. So we haven't talked about wrap up yet today. It's never been easier to do a post show. And, and Lyle, if you guys had a, a VIP event a week later that said, oh, if you bought these tickets, then you're now allowed to come to this thing. Um, a volunteer thank you is always good if we had a lot of people supporting the event. It doesn't, there's a lot of different categories, but you don't have to rent a venue anymore. So doing it just takes a bit of work, but the people that attend it appreciate it. When we did the big national one, we had a volunteer appreciation night. We had everybody come on. We brought in some of our speakers. Erin Sebula came and joined. She thanked everybody for all their work. It's just, it's, it's just meaningful and just wrap things up really, really well. So I know um, we kind of blasted through this. I want to be respectful of everybody's time. Um, but, but do you have any questions or what questions might you have, Lyle, that maybe we can answer quickly while we're still on here? Um, boy, it's sort of a fire hose thing here. Yeah. <laughs> it is recorded. We're going to get it afterwards. Yeah, I'm definitely going to be watching again. Um, yeah, my, I'm just uh, intimidated by the whole concept of um, doing something different like this um, and, and terrified if it doesn't work. But um, I feel a lot better having listened to you. Yes. There's, you want to deliver the best caliber product you can. That always, without fail, that's the focus. You have to, people are going to give you um, some flexibility and some acceptance that it may not be perfect. It may, it's a new world for everybody. Um, at the end of the day, people want to come and support you and it's giving them some, you know, we talked about it and, and it was, you know, I think your message in the chat was, was, I don't know if we can take this online or when we first started talking, you listed the items and, and I mean, we've done and seen so many of them that, you know, we, I, there's not a lot that we feel we can't take online. Uh, we're still leery of concerts, but um, there's ways that are creative that enable you to give people a chance to engage give people a chance to participate and give people a chance to give. And um, even some of our events that have had some, some flaws in them and they have not all been perfect, uh, but, but even some of the events that have had flaws, um, people are still ecstatic at the end of it. And, and they don't notice the flaws as much as we do. Uh, that's always the case with any event, but um, it's, it's not doing anything you know, maybe if it was a few months delayed, maybe if it was a few, you know, whatever COVID was when it first started, it's like, oh, this might be weeks. Um, well, we're going. <laughs> it's been a bit longer than we anticipated, um, mm -hmm. but it's it's just important to give people a chance. Doing nothing is not a, a great option right now and waiting this out. When is it going to be okay? Are people going to feel comfortable coming to big events again? There's, there's these, but I, I promise you one thing. If you do a virtual event, you do it well, people will want to attend time and time again. Um, so I, I do apologize. I, I'd love to chat about this for a, a long period. Um, and and we're, you know, feel free to reach out after um, and, and we can continue that conversation. Um, I'm just going to kind of finish off here and, and give everybody the chance. I know an hour is a, a long time. Um, but I'll, I'll go through the, the last pieces here. And um, so our partners, uh, these are the people that we've worked with. I've got a few more lines that I need to add in here. Um, I'm very happy to say if you called any one of these ones, um, they would give you a very honest opinion of us and, and it would be a positive opinion. Uh, they'll tell you that maybe there was some challenges, maybe there was some flaws, but uh, we're very proud of the relationships that we've built over the, the year of, of doing these. Um, um, and our offer, I know we talked about it at the start. Um, so our offer to you uh, is, is we would do 10% off for any uh, state home fundraising engagements if we were to, to enter in with you guys. Uh, COVID has extended their COVID relief pricing for anybody that's registering from this event. Um, and, and if you book within the two, next two weeks, sorry, we'll do all this. Uh, and for the first three that sign up with us, we'll upgrade it to our, our curated plus. So uh, we didn't talk about what we do. It wasn't really a, a shameless, shameless sales plug, but uh, we, we do thank you for your time. 
Um, and, and if anybody wants uh, stayathomefundraising.com slash calendar, uh, you can book a meeting with me directly there. Happy to chat with you. Uh, we do a front, a ton of just free conversations up front, talk about the event, see what it would be. And, and it's our chance to kind of win you over to the idea that we can do a, a great uh, virtual event with you and, and really bring it home. So um, thank you everybody for, for coming in. Um, thank you for spending this hour, uh, now hour and one, but uh, I'll stick around for a little while um, if, if you want. Um, and I believe Justin's gonna jump back on here. Yeah, thanks Drew. Um, thank you so much for that. I wrote down a bunch of notes. Um, Drew, actually, do you mind just showing up that last slide for me, please? I can do that. Um, yeah, so I'm gonna just post this in the chat. I know we're over time. So uh, I had some great points I wanted to read out, but you have the recording. And yeah, we're, our next one is really digging in on live auction specifically. So uh, that's done by the auction divas. You can go in the chat and click the link to register now. So you make sure um, you can attend or, or get the recording after, um, but please register for it. It's uh, just like you registered for this last one. It's with Shelly from the auction divas. Uh, Drew, thank you so much. Um, the Year of the Modern Fundraiser webinar series uh, it continues. Uh, we do it every two weeks and we try and bring in the most relevant information with our changing times. Um, we have some really exciting new things on our product side to show as well uh, with the live auctions. And I, I know you won't want to miss that because it really enhances the engagement when we, uh, we talk with Drew and, and Shelly and, and partners. So thank you so much for listening. I won't take up any of your time, uh, but if you do want to chat with us at Trellis, simply go to trellis.org uh, and join a demo. Rebecca, she has uh, been listening and um, she'd be happy to chat with you uh, with your fundraising needs. So thank you so much. Have a great day. And as I have learned, I invite you to leave if you haven't already. And if you did want to stick around and ask Drew some questions, I think he's going to kick around as well. So, but feel free to head off. Oh, and the music and everything. <laughs> there we go. I've never felt so fancy. I shouldn't have wore a pot shirt. Maybe it's a little fancy. This is big. Uh, but yeah, feel free to head out. Uh, if you want to ask any more questions, uh, and I do want to show this to the people that are around. Let's get the, the sound going. I love that. <laughs> uh, Drew didn't tell me that part. Um, I'm just going to show, um, show this for the people that are still around. So this is what's coming, right? So you have your live stream. And then what we've done is we put the software right on top so we can show, you know, they can click to their silent auction and still watch the person that's doing the live stream. Um, and what's, uh, this is all coming to you. For your galas this spring uh, and then you know little things so when someone says donate they can just simply click or go on their phones and do that right and when they click this pops up so um, to see more you're going to have to book a demo and talk with Rebecca but I did want to show that because we're just listening to experts like Drew to build this um, so we really want to help you engage um, so that's that's it for me um, if you have questions I'm sure Drew knows how to run it better than I do so I'm going to pass it right back no, well, I guess the first question is, how do they book a uh, demo with, with Rebecca? Is that the, the link that you posted in the chat? or um, The link I posted in the chat is the, the new webinar. Um, if you just go to trellis.org, which I'll post in the chat, uh, there's buttons to register for a demo there. So just go to trellis.org, learn about it, and I'll even put in the direct link to get to the demo sign-up page. Perfect. And it's a group demo. It's really low barriers. You get to learn from other people. So highly recommend just going for your own learning. Yeah, thanks, Drew. Oh, it's uh, it's it's been very very helpful. Uh, I think you know for anybody who's who's still here, good partners, good relationships. Um, you know, working with with experts uh, on being able to to do this, and, and Trellis know, really knows about it, and they've they've been amazing at, at building the features that we need uh, for our events. And uh, excited to see where virtual events go in in twenty twenty one. Awesome. I don't see. Any more questions? If you wanted to review it, Laura's still on the call. Um, Laura had a couple of questions that I answered. No, it looks like Laura's left. So um, I don't see any more. So I, I think I'm going to sneak off as well. So thanks, Drew. Thank you, everybody. And uh, have a great day.